If you've ever wondered what the Venturi system is in a carburetor and how it works and what that little restriction does inside the induction tube, then keep watching because in the next four and a half minutes, you'll know just that. Hello and welcome and in this session I'm specifically going to go through the workings of the Venturi within the carburetta. Basically how it works and what's the reason for it, why do we need it. The Venturi is one of those things on a carburetta where most people know it's got one but they're not quite sure how it works and what it's actually for. It might even surprise you that I've come across a few mechanics in the past that don't even know either. So in the next few minutes, you'll know more than they do. So when air is drawn into the induction tube on its way into the engine, it of course passes this restriction in the Venturi, which I'll explain a little more about in a minute. But after it's done so, it's important to mention that the air on both sides of this restriction is moving at exactly the same speed. That's providing that the tube on this side is the same size and carries is the same volume of air as it does on this side. But there may well be some differences between these two sides on some carburettors, but just let's say for now that they're both the same so I can explain my point that little bit better. But if we look at the amount of air coming into the induction tube, there's a certain volume of it because of how thick this pipe is on this side, which is exactly the same as this side in this model. How is it that this whole volume of air this side can move through this narrowing and allow the air to move at the same speed this side. How can it possibly carry that much volume to support that speed here? Well, the way it does that is that when the air goes through the restriction here, its velocity increases. Basically, it speeds up faster than these two areas, and that allows it to feed that volume of air from this side to this side, allowing the air in these two areas to move at the same speed. And because the energy of this high velocity air is focused on going towards the engine rather than pushing outwards, there's a decrease increase of pressure in this direction here and it will become apparent in a few minutes why that's important. Because the engine has to pull such a large volume of air through this restriction in order to feed it with all the air that it needs, this side of the restriction tends to build up that higher suction pressure and the reason for that is because it's a little more difficult for the engine to pull this volume of air through this restriction than it is the rest of the induction tube. And so this is why that suction pressure builds up. And it's this suction pressure that helps to pull out fuel out of the main jet. And as we established a few minutes ago, because there's low pressure here inside this restriction, there's little or no pressure pushing down on the fuel this way. So it's easily drawn out by the suction pressure and into the induction tube. And as the exit of the main jet where the fuel comes out is right on or near the area of the restriction, the high velocity air travelling through it hits the fuel so hard, this is what's known as atomizing it. It's spread the fuel out even further into small particles between all of that air. Now the fuel is separated enough with enough air between it, looking more like a mist at this point than a fluid, that when it enters the engine it can combust efficiently. And so with that of course just covering the basics, I want to thank you so much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe if you've gained something from it. And please take a look down in the description below where you'll find a link to my website for some free downloads. I've designed these to help with diagnostics, troubleshooting and repairs of certain two-stroke engines, mainly chainsaws. And I shall be continually adding new downloads here, so please keep your eye on this side of the site so you can always be up to date with what's new on there and to continually see if there's any downloads of particular value to you. The best of it is that they're printable so you can take them in the workshop with you and study them at your own time whilst you're working on your machine. There are some paid downloads, but most of them are and will remain free. And in the meantime, I'll be back soon. Thank you for watching.